Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Now is the time to trim your lamps and get ready for the coming of the Lord. Stay tuned for the Midnight Cry broadcast. If we, if we could even get a glimpse of the depth of our need, we would be broken, but I'll tell you, we would discover that in that low place, in that very place of coming to the very end of ourselves, we would discover that there is a Savior who, whose arms are open wide. That was the next thing Brother Watchman Nee saw. He saw his need. He saw that the Savior had taken the wrath of God, stepped in between him and the wrath of God and received it all, embraced his guilt. Justice was gone. Justice was satisfied. His sins had already been punished. But then he saw in the stretched out arms of the Savior, arms that were stretched out open wide that said, come, come, I did this so I could welcome you home. I did this so the mercy could be shown. Oh, praise God. Praise God. The devil holds power over the people of the world because they're living in their sins, and he's right. I'm, we're guilty. What can we say? What, do I, what is my answer? What hope do I have? And that's what he says after this. What he says, the accuser of our brothers is cast down, accuse them before our God day and night. He's been hurled down. And so now they overcame him. Now you see where the path to victory lies. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Folks, we are struggling to fight our way through life. We're struggling to overcome the burdens that we carry. And somehow we, don't, we miss this simple truth. We assert it and, like I say, we live as if it isn't so. We do not see that every failure he took. Now, this is not a license to say, oh, good, I get to stick my ticket to heaven in my back pocket and do as I please. It's all taken care of. That's not it. It's not, it's not for people who want to find a way to sin and get away with it. This is, a way, this is for people who set their course toward heaven, who come because they know the need to be delivered from everything. In the process, we come short, but that, that sacrifice was given once for all. You know, we have that picture in the, in the Old Testament. God gave so much of a picture of what he was doing. But it was a picture where they offered sacrifices. But you know, the thing is, they never quite did the job, did they? Because it could take care of the sins that I, I just committed, but now I walk away and got to get another animal and go back. I mean, that's, that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but you get the point. They kept having to offer them, and the blood of bulls and goats can't take away sin. That was a picture. That was looking forward to something that God was going to do. It was designed not to save people. The law could never save. All it does is tell me, what I'm, tell me what's wrong. But, oh, it led, to, it led to a Savior. And there was one sacrifice that was offered. And he offered it once for all time. I mean, that's, somehow that just doesn't compute in our, in our natural thinking. How could something that happened on a, on a bloody cross 2,000 years ago make a difference in my life? But the message of the cross is what that meant was my sin. Everything that would keep me separated from a holy God was completely put, taken care of once. If I try to come to God some other way, forget it. There's only one way. I come and I bow at that, before that cross and I confess, Lord, I'm the one that needs to be there. But I recognize that the sins that caused me to feel my separation from a holy God, you took them upon your heart. You took them upon your body. You know, one of the things it said about the Old Testament sacrifices, you can read this later if you want, I think it's in Hebrews 10. But it said, if that had done the job, if that had been effective, 
the worshipers would have no longer felt guilty because of their sins. What an awesome victory. What an awesome effect of, the, of really coming to, to lay hold of the one sacrifice that Jesus. I mean, how many testimonies have I heard? And I was listening to some of the singing yesterday and again this morning from a, a brother who's gone now, but he was a, a powerful singer in his day, gospel singer, Doug Oldham. Some of you may know who he is. Wow, what a story that he had. He, he grew up in church, but he, was, he lived a double life. His heart was out in the world, he was a, and he, became, he got married, but he became an abusive drunk. And the marriage broke up, and he, everything was, you know, had really gone to hell in a handbasket spiritually, and somehow, I don't remember the details now, but somehow God reached that man. Oh, and he began to sing, and it pours out of him. Oh, songs like, thanks to Calvary, I don't live here anymore. <laughs> because he lives, I can face tomorrow. You know, Bill Gaither got his start playing piano for Doug Oldham. The early songs that they wrote were written for Doug Oldham. <laughs> I'm free from the fear of tomorrow. I'm free from the guilt of the past. I've traded my shackles for a glorious song. Praise God, I'm free at last. Those are songs that he would go out and it just poured out of him. There's just a, because it was real. And I'll tell you what, he came to Christ and he really saw and he really surrendered to the truth and he said, all right, I give you my sins. I give you, I confess them. I, I, I'm turning from them. I'm putting my faith in you. His guilt was gone. Are you carrying around a load of guilt this morning, a guilt, a load of regret, a load of bo a burden of what you think you've done and you ought to be? My God, that's what the cross is about. Jesus took that burden upon himself. All of God's anger and wrath about that was poured out then. It's done. It's finished. We don't have to carry that burden anymore. We can come to him in our weakest time and bring our sins to him, lay them at his feet and say, oh God, help me. But I'm trusting in what you did. That, that offering doesn't have to be offered again. You did it. You knew about my weakness. You knew I was going to come and, be, and need you. You did it. It's eternal. It covers all the needs of God's people from all time. Everyone who will ever be brought to that. My God, we, over, we, we can stand there and look the devil in the eye and say, he has forgiven me. Devil, I don't have to listen to you. I'm not under your power anymore. You can, you can huff and you can puff, but you can't blow my house down. You can accuse me all you like, but all that I ever did, he took upon him. You go accuse him if you want to. He's the one who took my guilt. Oh, God, if you're living this morning as if that's not true, if you're carrying that load, there's a place to take that load. There's a place to lay it and be free as if it had never happened. God can give you a freedom. You can leave the, past, the guilt of the past. You can face the future without the fear. Think of that song, I'm free from the fear of the future. I'm fear of fear what's coming. I'm free, praise God. Anyway, the, the words have gone out of my head, but... Free from the guilt of the past. We can exchange our shackles for a glorious song. Praise God. And it isn't something I have to engineer. Of course, that doesn't help our pride a lot, does it? You know, we want God to give us some noble task, and then we will earn our way, and we can stick our chest out and say, I deserve to be here, God. Oh, I'll tell you what, we have leveled before the cross. You know, you got people that are lost in a gutter of sin. It's just made wrecks out of them. Even society just looks down on them. And then you got these high society, proud people. Do you know they're not one bit different in the heart? They may be worse off because they don't know their their need. They've been able to they've been able to cultivate a a, a little outside and exterior that masks the real condition of the heart. Folks, are, if you have any idea what your heart is like, 
And, I, and this is, you know, people are going to say, oh, it's just talking about me or because of this. It isn't. <laughs> but I'll tell you, there's a lot of us right now that are discovering what's in us. You notice that? Not pretty, is it? <laughs> but you know it's God's love. The path of victory lies through it, not running from it. Now, I think I've mentioned the uh, story from the life of Isabel Kuhn. She was quite a, just lived a life, a lost life. This is about 100 years ago or something like that. Party girl, just resisted anything to do with God, but God got a hold of her life and gave her a burden to go to China as a missionary. And she was, in those days, you didn't get on a plane, you got on a boat and it took a while. So it was a, it was a time when a band of missionaries were getting together every day and, and having devotions together and sharing and getting prepared. And a senior missionary who had been there and was going back uh, just warned them and said, all the scum, I forget the exact words, but the scum was one of the, the scum of your heart is going to come out when you get out there. And Isabel said, huh? What do you mean? God's put all my past behind me. I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm going out here to be a missionary. What do you mean he's going to bring out the scum? She found out. She got in circumstances that just brought out stuff that was in her. I'll tell you, we don't need to be dismayed when the scum comes to the surface. God is going to put you and me in circumstances that bring out the weaknesses, the baggage, the garbage, the trash, all the stuff that's in our life that needs to be gone. But he doesn't do it to destroy us. He does it to set us free. He does it so we can bring it and say, here it is, Lord. It's ugly. It's not pretty, but I, I confess it. I need to be delivered. And I'll tell you, he's got the answer. It happened 2,000 years ago. He knew about it. He knew about everything that's wrong with you and me. We're the ones who live with this illusion that we're good people. He's the one who's good. But oh, as we yield to him, he begins to bring his goodness. There's a new life that begins to grow. But anyway, oh, this business of the devil being able to accuse, we need to stand and, and face our sins and bring them to the cross and believe in the power of the blood to cleanse us, and we need to stand fast in the victory that he's already won. It's that simple. I didn't say it was easy, but it is simple. May God give us the grace and make this truth live. We don't need to proclaim it just so we can reiterate our doctrines. This isn't about that. This is about a spiritual need that exists in me and in you. We need to get a hold of this and make it real. If we don't live it, what's the next generation going to see? If we sing about all the glorious victory that we have in Jesus and what he did and we live as if it isn't so, what good is that? But his victory is real. And we can have that victory today. We can be clean as if we had never sinned if we're only willing to come and humble ourselves before his feet. The blood of the Lamb is my only hope by the word of their testimony. And what he's really getting at here is, is not just words that we utter that, that aren't, they're disconnected from what we really are, but this is, this is what's coming out of the depths of my heart that I stand, that I speak. Here I stand, devil. I believe in what Jesus said. I am absolutely confessing he is my Lord. I am on his side. You can you can peddle your paper somewhere else. I, am, I belong to Jesus Christ. We're going to have to stand on the truth of what he said. How many of you have run into places where you know the words, you know what to say, but now you've got to use it? Now it's the only thing standing between you and disaster? And all of a sudden you're going to have to take your stand or you're going to, you're going to crumble under something. God is going to put his word to the test and he is going to bring us to a place where we have a conviction that his word is, will stand when this world will not. My word will live forever. The, the words that I speak, their spirit and their life, Jesus said. We have what we need in him, but we're going to have to stand upon it. 
Praise God. Clock's turning, but that's all right. And here's the other one. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. This is where we stumble. We don't want to die. We don't understand the problem. We, we think that if God can just clean off the dirty bits, we're good, good to go. And all we have to do is do the right stuff and everything's going to be okay. No, there are no clean bits. There's nothing but dirty bits. You get the point. Anyway, there's nothing but corruption in the old life. You don't fix it up, you replace it with Jesus. And so when God puts his finger on things and allows things to come out of us, we bring them to him and we say, oh God, this is why you died. This is why Jesus died. This is why I need a savior to deliver me from this. I bring it to you. I'm, I'm willing to lay it down, but you're going to have to help me. And we keep doing that, and we keep taking that stand. And I'll tell you, the, the power of things that hold us, are, it, there's, going to be a, there's going to be actual deliverances in our lives. How many of you know that's true? You've experienced that in, in varying measures. You've seen, you've seen victory over things that once held you as a prisoner. Well, I'll tell you, where do we get that from? Is that because you geared up your will and you learned theology and you learned what to say? Is this positive thinking? This is the cross. This is what Jesus accomplished on the cross, brought in, over into our lives. It's got to become a living reality in us. Are we just playing church, asserting good doctrine? That's not good enough. We're going to have to live this. We're going to have to be willing to bring our lives and say, Oh, God, I'm exactly what you say I am. But I see what Jesus did. And he laid down his life. And I'll tell you, for me to to lay hold of his sacrifice. What am I saying? I'm saying I deserve that. I'm saying the only pathway to eternal life is for this life here to die. Because this one, this life can never inherit what God has. It's, it's beyond repair. But Jesus Christ gave me a way to die and yet live. I can lay down my life by faith, putting my hope in what he did, and I can receive that brand new life, and it can begin to grow. You know, our problem is this is a process, and we get lost in the process, and we get lost in our lives, and all of a sudden this is not quite as real as it was maybe at one time, and suddenly we're, we're carrying around burdens of fear, carrying around burdens of anxiety, we're carrying around burdens of guilt, of, of regret, if only I had done this, I'm responsible for that. And it just piles on until all of a sudden we're just way down under this heavy load. Jesus didn't give us that. You, you brought that on yourself. These are battlefields of your making and mine. He has given us a freedom. He called us to come to him. Come to me. All who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. We don't have to earn it. <laughs> Praise God, I'll give it to you. Take my yoke. Learn from me. I'm self-willed and angry. No, wait a minute. I'm gentle. I'm humble in heart. And what's the rest? You will find rest for your souls. Oh, the wisdom of the world. That's, that's just absolutely 180 degrees different from the, from the wisdom of the world. If I'm going to triumph, I'm, I'm going to have to gear up my will. Bless God, it's my way or the highway. I'm, you know, I've got to be strong. I've got to gear up. No, we've got to let go. Say, Lord, take over. My problems are self-generated. My pathway to victory is letting go of these things that want to rise up and take control. But you've opened a door of hope, and you don't despise me because I'm this way. You knew what you were getting into. We've heard these things so many times, but do we need this? Yes. I do. This isn't just so we can sort of reestablish our doctrine. There's needs right now in people's lives, many of them. It's not just one or two or three here, here or there. There's a need. There's something that God's heart is concerned about in, in every one of us that we really live our lives in the light of the cross. That we take the benefits of what we have there, that we learn how to live in victory against the, what the devil is doing. 
And we're going to have to let go, aren't we? Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you, and, those, and you who dwell in them. I'll tell you, there is a place, even while we're living in this world, where we can live in that realm. I don't mean we're just floating over life, but I, you don't understand what I'm saying. We're not under the circumstances. We're on the throne with Jesus, and the devil knows it. Man, he will do everything in, your, in his power to convince you that this doesn't apply to you. Well, what else has he got to work with but a lie? When are we going to stop believing his lies and start believing what God says? That's the answer. But woe to the earth. There's a realm where people live in this world. Woe, that's what he's picturing here by this symbolism. Woe to the earth and the sea because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury because he knows that his time is short. You sense that? I mean, if that was true when John wrote these words two th almost 2,000 years ago, what do you think about today? You wonder why the spirit of rage and conflict is abroad in the world today? My God, the devil is scared to death and he's angry and he knows, he knows what's coming. He knows what took place on that cross. He knows his time is short. He is going to put forth every effort he can to capture the minds and hearts of people. And he's going to pull on their nature. He's going to, and he's just destroying lives. He just, you know, they follow the wisdom of the world. I can do as I please. I can do what I want. Yeah. That's a prescription for hell. You're walking right smack toward a cliff. But I'll tell you, it doesn't have to be that way because Jesus went to that cross 2,000 years ago. If he hadn't done that, you and I would have no hope today. Zero. But because he did, because he lives, we can, we can face tomorrow. We, have, we go from no hope to perfect hope in him. Someone who has already conquered our greatest enemy. But the price is to come and to humble ourselves at his feet and put our faith in him and confess him as Lord. If you've never done that, you can do that in a moment of time when the Lord makes it real to your heart. You, when he comes knocking on your heart's door, you open it. But believer, God help us not to live like unbelievers struggling under the circumstances. But be willing to walk in the light as he is in the light. Because when we do, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And we, and we have fellowship one with another. I'm trying to remember the verse. You, you all may be familiar with it in 1 John chapter 1. But part of that light is the light of the truth of what he's done. Walking in that light. Walking in the light of the fact that victory comes by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony of not loving our lives to the death. I'll tell you, you walk and live in the light of that. There is going to be a total, complete cleansing. We don't have to carry guilt around. We don't have to live with this sense of, oh, God, I can't do it. I'm just, you know. Guess what? You can't in yourself. But I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I'll tell you, it is finished. It is finished. The war, as far as heaven is concerned, the war is over. And our job is to proclaim it. Our job is to live it. And just rejoice in God and just cooperate with it with a process that, has, that comes out of that. But I'll tell you, there is a life, there is an incorruptible life that flows out of the, the cross and the resurrection. You know what incorruptible means? You can't kill it. You can't pollute it. You can't do anything to it. It's going to be what it is. It's the very life of God. My God, what a glorious gospel we have that we can partake of the very life of God and grow up to be his, his sons and his daughters and live with him forever. And we're totally unworthy of it. But we can bow down at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ who loved us enough to, to give it, to lay down his life. Humiliation and suffering to take our guilt so that we could have an open door of hope this morning. Praise God. Let's live in the light of the fact that it's finished. And just praise him and give him the glory. Thank God. This has been the Midnight Cry broadcast. If you would like a DVD or a CD of today's message in its entirety, please request it by program number. DVDs are $10 and CDs are $5. 
And for those who request it, we will send you our quarterly publication, The Midnight Cry Messenger, free and postage paid. Send your request to Midnight Cry Ministries, Post Office Box 685, Southern Pines, North Carolina, 28388. We invite you to join us again next week at this same time. And may God richly bless you until then.